In this video, we will see how to create a digitally fillable PDF form. These are interactive documents that can be shared with others and they can fill in the details, save it, or share the filled document. For this, we will use PDF Escape. Let us search and open the PDF Escape website, which is www.pdfescape.com. PDF Escape is a PDF editor. It provides two platforms to choose from. One is an online editor and the other is a software editor for Windows. The online platform is completely free to use. So, we will be covering the online PDF editor platform. Once we choose the free online editor, we will be provided with four options. We can create a new PDF document from scratch. We can upload a PDF document for editing. We can upload a PDF document from the internet. Or, we can load previously opened PDF documents. The last option needs sign-in. Since we are going to edit a PDF document saved on our system, we will choose the second option. Upload PDF to PDF Escape. We will upload our document to PDF Escape, and it will take some time to open. We have a demo form here. With this hand icon clicked, we can scroll up or down by left-clicking and dragging the mouse up or down. Also, we can zoom in and out, using this slider. Here in our form, we have some fields like name, address, some selectable options, etc. This is just a simple PDF form. We cannot enter any details in it. Generally, we would have printed the form, filled it out manually by hand, then, scanned it, and then saved or shared the digital copy with others. But with PDF Escape we could make this simple form fillable. For creating or editing a PDF document, PDF Escape has provided us with some tools. Here to the left, we have some tools that give us the option to add text, images, links, form elements, shapes, etc. These are some other sets of tools like adding sticky notes, text highlighter, underlining, etc. In this third set, we get page-level tools like rotation, cropping pages, adding pages, straightening pages, etc. This here is the page view. We can add bookmarks. We also have the option to save, download, and print the page. To make this form fillable, we will need form field elements. Let us edit the name field. We will need to add a text box element, where, user can enter their name. To begin the editing, we will click this pencil icon. Then to add a form field element, we will click on this first set of tools. Here we will click on the form field. Under the form field creation tool, we have all these types of elements. Since we need a text box, we will click on this, text type. Then click on select. We will get a cursor with a plus shape and a box attached to it. We will carefully adjust the cursor position, then, left click and drag it till we get the desired size. Then we leave the mouse button. We will get a text box. Don't worry if the position or size of the drawn text box is not correct. We can adjust them manually. Also, make sure that you save the progress regularly. Now let us come out of editing mode and see what the name field looks like. The name field is now fillable. Now let us work on the address field. Here also we need a text box. But the difference between the text box of the name and address field is that the address field should have a multi-line entry text box. By default a text box has a single line entry property. To have a multi-line text box for the address field, we need to configure the settings of our text box. But let us first insert a text box for our address field. The process is the same as we saw for the name field. We will select the text type from the form field creation tool and carefully place it. Now as we can see it allows only single line entry. The text is in the middle and pressing enter does nothing. To make this text box multi-line, we will first enable the edit mode. Then click on the text box. We can see that it is selected. Now click on this setting button. 
Here we can see that there are some configurable field properties like required, read-only, multiline, etc. Since we want this text box to be a multiline text box, we will enable this multiline checkbox. Make sure, this visible option is not disabled by accident. Otherwise, your text box will become invisible in the final document. This password property is used if the text box is used for entering a password. The text you will enter as a password will be hidden with the asterisk symbol. Here you can set the maximum allowable character length for the text box. It means, if you set it as 20, then, you cannot enter more than 20 characters in this text box. This alignment property will align the entered text to the left, center, or right. It is left by default. So, with multi-line property enabled, we will click OK. Now we can see that, entry starts from the top of the text box, and by pressing Enter, we are able to insert multi-line entries. So, we now have a multi-line text box for our address field. Now let us move forward with choice entries. Here we are supposed to make a single choice from the given options. To have such a single selection field, we can go with the form element called the radio button. Select the radio button. You will get a plus sign cursor with a small square shape on it. Position the square carefully at the center and click. A circular radio button will be placed. Now, immediately place radio buttons for the remaining options for the same entry. This is important. Placing them immediately will ensure that all the radio buttons belong to the same group. This means that if we check the properties of these radio buttons, they all will have the same name. In our case, it's button 4. This will ensure that only one option is selected from the options belonging to the same group. Like, B also has name button 4. C2 has the name button 4. And so does the option D. We can adjust the position of the radio button element manually. Hover the mouse on the element till you get the four arrow cursor. Then adjust the position with a click and drag. We can see that only one option is selectable. Please note that we can customize the check type property of the radio button. This will set how the radio button selection will look like. The circle check type is the default. So, this is how the radio button can be added. Now let us look at another choice entry which allows multiple option selection. We can achieve this with a form element called checkbox. To add a checkbox, get into the edit mode. Then from the form field creation tool, select the type as the checkbox. We will see a plus sign cursor with a small box on it. Now carefully position the cursor, and left-click plus drag to create a checkbox of your desired size. Then leave the mouse button. The checkbox will be placed. Place the checkboxes for the rest of the options. The difference between the radio button and the checkbox is that the checkbox allows the user to select one or more options, whereas, radio buttons only allow single option selection. For checkboxes too we can customize the check type. It will determine how your selections will look like. These are the available check types. So this is how we could add multiple choice options in our form. In our next entry, we are expecting the user to enter the name of the visiting month. We can replace this with another form element called a drop-down list. We can provide all the entries in the drop-down list. When the user clicks on the drop-down, all the entries will be shown. The user then selects one of the entries by clicking on it. To add the drop-down list, select the type as drop-down from the form field creation tool. Then as seen before, create a box of the required size at the required position. Your drop-down list element will be placed. The drop-down list element has a small down-pointing arrow to its right. Now we need to provide all the entries for the drop-down list. To do so, enable the edit mode, click on the drop-down element, and then, click on the settings button. Here we can see the field properties. Under field options, write all the entries that you want to show in the drop-down list. Only one entry per line. In our example, 
we will write the names of the months, one per line. Then click OK. Your drop-down list is ready. Let's view the list. When we click the small arrow, the drop-down list will expand. Then we can select any one entry by clicking on it. It is quite convenient for the user. Our next form entry needs the user to enter a day of the week. We can definitely use a drop-down list just like our previous entry. But there is one more form element that can be used to achieve the same thing. It is a list box. A list box shows all the entries to the user from the start, unlike the drop-down list. User just has to select an entry by clicking on it. To place a list box, we will select list box from the form field creation tool. Then place it on the form as per the requirement. Now we will access the field property of this list box through its settings. Under the field options, we will enter all the options, one per line. In our case, the option entries are days of the week. After entering them we will click OK. Our list box is now ready. We will little bit adjust the size of our list box manually so that all the entries are visible. Now let's view our list box. We can see all the entries from the beginning. Users can click on any entry to select it. It would have been more useful if the list box had the property to select multiple entries. But, it only allows to select only a single entry. So this is how we can add a list box to our form. Our quote needs to be repositioned. It is very close to the list box and looks bad. We can reposition the text. To do so, click on the edit mode, then, click on the line. The whole line will be selected. Then hover the mouse, till four arrowed cursor is seen. Then left click and drag the line to the desired position, and then leave the mouse button. The line will be repositioned. We will reposition the rest of the lines one by one. Make sure to save the document from time to time. If your original PDF form document was not created from an image then, you can edit the text in the PDF document. Suppose we want to make some changes in this line. To do so, we need to click on the edit button. Then click on the line you desire to edit. Make the necessary changes. I will change this word 1 to number 1. And the modification is done. I can do the same modification in this line too. And it's done. You may need to adjust the font and the font size of the text. The limitation here is that we can't have a large variety of fonts. Out of the given list, only these highlighted ones are the fonts that can be used for modification. Rest fonts are the names of the fonts used in the document. You cannot use them for editing. This will be a problem if you are editing some text that has a different font. For instance, take this, quote, text. Its font is Blackadder ITC. But if I try to modify the text, the original font will be gone and cannot be set back. So we need to edit the text with extra care with respect to fonts. We can say that with few limitations, PDF Escape does provide an option to edit the text in the PDF document. We can add text to the document. To do so, click on the first tool set, and select text. Now click on the document where you wish to add the text. A small text area will appear. Now type the text. You can adjust the font size and font. We will slightly reposition the text line. We can also add a reset button from the form field creation tool. Select the type as reset button. Then you can place the button wherever you wish, with a click. You can modify the properties of the button from settings. Clicking the reset button will reset all the fields in the form. Make sure to save the document. Let us download this edited PDF document. Our document is downloaded. Let's open it. The document is opened in a browser. We can see all the form elements in our PDF. 
Let us reset the form fields using the reset button. The reset button works. Since the document is opened in a browser, after filling in the details in the form, we cannot save the document. In order to save a filled form, we need to open our document using PDF Reader software. Any PDF Reader software should do the job. Let us open our form in the PDF Reader. So this is our edited form. Let us fill in the details in the form fields. Now, we will save this document. On opening it again, we can see that all our entered data is saved. Opening it in a browser also shows our filled data. Now we can share this filled PDF form with others. This is how we were able to use PDF Escape to edit our simple PDF document form and convert it into a fillable form. If you liked the information then, please like and subscribe to my channel. Thank you for your time and patience. Have a nice day.